Today, AMD is releasing one weird CPU. Intel's next gen leaks, the Ryzen 9950X beats Intel at 120 watts, and Nvidia's 5090 clocks to the moon. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, while most everyone's focusing on AMD's next-gen Ryzen AI 300 series, the company is actually working on releasing one weird CPU. As you can see right here, reportedly AMD is prepping a new hotpoint CPU without the NPU. This was originally leaked by the well-known hardware leaker Golden Pig on the Weibo forums, and according to him, AMD is planning to release a new Ryzen 7 8845HS variant in the near future, and basically what this variant does is disable the XDNA NPU. This one is said to be called the Ryzen 7 8745HS, and the reason it's so odd is just because essentially the entire point for the Ryzen 8000 series is the fact that they come with these MPUs. Well, as you can see right here, this is the actual leak here, and according to it, you can see that it really is essentially the exact same minus the MPU, but as Tom's Hardware states, they could see them doing something like making a slight clock speed change, like for example, taking all of 100 to 200 megahertz clock speed just to further segment that CPU. CPU. But essentially the reason for it, as they state here, is essentially to sell off defectives in for silicon that might not have a functioning MPU. At least that's the guess. This is essentially binning, which is something that happens all the time. It does make sense just because either you make a new product or you throw it in the trash. And obviously this would sell for cheaper than the uh, regular Ryzen 8000 CPU with the MPU. So for anyone who isn't really interested in that, you could potentially get a laptop for a pretty good deal. But first, when you want to make your own weird hardware, there's an awesome site that'll get you started in computer science. And thanks to them sponsoring today's video, they're offering all of my viewers a 30-day free trial. I'm of course talking about Brilliant, the one place I trust when I'm ready to learn more about computer science. From their new course on large language models to computer memory, coding, and everything in between. But as I've always said, it's not what they teach you that really matters, but how they teach you. Because Brilliant's courses actually use a hand on approach so you do the topics you're learning. That way you're not just reading a bunch of books or anything like that. And what's great is that Brilliant has courses for everyone, no matter your prior knowledge. So join me and millions more at brilliant.org slash gamermeld or use the QR code and you'll get a 30-day free trial. Plus, when you sign up at brilliant.org slash gamermeld, you'll get 20% off your premium membership for life. And next up for today, we have one very nice news story that essentially reveals the SKU names for Intel's next-gen desktop Air Lake CPUs. Now, ordinarily, this really wouldn't be all that big of a deal just because we almost always know the SKU names for next-gen based on the previous gen, 13,900K obviously becomes a 14,900K, but don't forget that Air Lake is the start for their desktop CPUs for Intel's new branding. So we actually don't really know what the naming scheme is ultimately going to be. Well, we do know that it's uh, Intel Ultra 200 series, but we don't know exactly what they're doing for each SKU. That is, until now. As you can see right here, the new version of CPU-Z, and of course, if anyone would know besides obviously Intel, something like CPU-Z would likely know before the actual release. And according to this, you can see the Air Lake S models, which is of course their desktop CPUs, are as follows. The Core Ultra 9 285K, the Ultra 9 275, Core Ultra 7 265K, Ultra 255, Core Ultra 5, 245K and then the Ultra 240. Basically, it looks like Intel is still sticking to the K and non-K models. Obviously, the K being that it comes with an unlock multiplier and you can overclock it, but the non-K models do not. Not only that, but it also showed the next-gen mobile Lunar Lake SKUs and just like what was leaked, these are going to be their 200 V series. We have the Core Ultra 9 288V, Core Ultra 7 268V, 266V, 258V, and 256V, and then the Core Ultra 5 236V, 228V, and 226V. Basically, it looks like Lunar Lake is going to be a full-on product stack 
pretty much completely across the board. Not too much of a surprise there, but of course the difference being that it adds the V moniker. And next up, we have one huge story for AMD's next-gen Ryzen 9 9950X. Obviously, I recently shared some benchmarks in my last video for the regular 12-core 9900X. Now we have the flagship 16-core 9950X. And as you can see right here, these benchmarks are in Blender, and they actually come from an Anantech forum member, Igor Kavinsky. So, these aren't guaranteed to be accurate or anything like that but if these are correct let's just say the 9950x is one beast now you can see it working right here so it certainly does seem to be accurate but regardless let's go over some of these starting things off as you can see here at just 90 watts the 9950x beats out the 5950x at 142 watts then at 120 watts the 9950x basically ties the 14900k we are talking one point difference from 269 to 270 so we're talking margin of error difference here we're talking zero point i think it was 0.3 percent increase basically identical here but then in the junk shop benchmark the 120 watt 9950x beats the 14900k and in classroom although still they're essentially the same here we're talking about from 128 to 130 still a much bigger difference than the 269 to 270 but very similar yet it's running at 120 watts while the 14900k gets all the way up to 253 watts now we actually do have some more benchmarks these ones come from geekbench 6 and there is something a little odd here but starting things off i will say that the 9600x single threaded score actually beats the 14900k this is wild, but of course, we're talking single threaded right here. When we get up to multi threaded score, it is, of course, nowhere near the 14,900K. But believe it or not, every single one of these next gen 9000 CPUs beats the 14,900K's single threaded score. And that obviously is very impressive. With that said, the odd one out here is that the 9950X. While the single threaded score is seriously impressive, the multi threaded score, yes, it does beat the 9900X, though not by too much. When we look at single threaded score, we can see that the 9900X actually beats out the 9950X. Now, it does likely use precision boost overdrive, and we can see the 9900X score likely stock here. We don't really know for sure because it obviously doesn't mention it in the benchmark but the really wild thing is the fact that the multi-threaded score actually does show it lower than the 14,900k now obviously especially when we go back here at how well it's doing in blender if this does end up being correct this one does seem like an odd one out but of course time as always will tell and lastly for today is NVIDIA's next-gen GPUs get closer and closer, we're starting to see more and more leaks. And let's just say if this one is right, NVIDIA's next-gen is set to be one monster of a generation, especially the RTX 5090. As you can see right here, this leak comes from Panzerlead on the Chippewa forums, who is certainly someone who's gotten quite a few leaks right in the past. And once again, if this one is right, Wow, is it set to be a doozy. As you can see right here, according to this, he claims that the base, not the boost, but the base frequency of the RTX 5090 is nearly 2.9 gigahertz. That is a huge deal. That's a massive jump from the current 4090's 2.23 gigahertz, and it even beats the boost clock of the 4090, which is 2.52 gigahertz. And it doesn't just sort of beat the boost clock it beats it by quite a bit and once again we're talking about the base clock here so if the boost clock it's anywhere near the boost that it normally does with past generations we are talking about well over three gigahertz for anyone who may not know there's really two main ways that you can make a gpu faster minus architectural changes of course that will make a little bit of a difference here and there sometimes it can be a really big difference but the two main ones are going to be increasing clocks or increasing cores and right here as you can see nvidia if this is right is set to be increasing clocks by a very awesome amount so pretty much any kind of core increase or anything like that is just going to be 
even more. It's just going to be icing on the cake. Basically, NVIDIA's next-gen RTX 5090 is gearing up to be one monster of a GPU. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for NVIDIA's next-gen RTX 5090, or are you just worried about the price increase that they likely will end up having on this? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day!